Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Configuring Pulse Modulation on the SMA100B. In this short presentation, we'll explain how to use the Rodian Schwartz SMA100B Analog Signal Generator to create pulsed RF signals. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of signal generators and pulse modulation. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding Pulse Signal Generation, before beginning this presentation. On the SMA100B, we access pulse modulation by selecting the Modulation tile and then choosing Pulse Modulation from the menu. There are two sources for pulse signals on the SMA. Pulses can be created by the SMA's internal pulse generator or by an external source. The more common case is using the SMA's internal pulse generator, so that's where we'll start. There are three modes for the pulse generator, Single Pulse, Double Pulse, and Pulse Train. We'll cover single and double mode first before moving on to pulse trains. As the name implies, single pulse mode sends a single pulse with a given pulse width and a given pulse period or repetition interval between the pulses. Keep in mind that the pulse width must be shorter than the pulse period. In double pulse mode, pairs of pulses are sent. Because we're sending two pulses each time, we now have double pulse delay, which is the time from the start of the first pulse to the start of the second pulse in the pair. In addition, we need to define the width of the second pulse. Note that the width of these two pulses can be different. After we configure our pulses, we can use the Pulse Graph feature with both single and double pulses to graphically verify or view pulse widths and intervals. In addition to describing the width and the spacing of the pulses, we also have to specify how these pulses are sent. Do we want to send a single pulse or a series of pulses? Do we send pulses automatically or only when some event or trigger occurs. There are several different trigger modes that we can use in sending pulses. We'll start with the two most common ones, auto and single. The last three modes will be covered later in this presentation. Auto mode repeats the defined pulses continuously without needing any user intervention or external input. In single mode, the single or double pulse will be transmitted each time the execute single trigger button is pressed. Remember in single mode, only a single pulse or a pulse pair is transmitted with each trigger press. The third pulse mode on the SMA100B is called a pulse train. A pulse train is a sequence of pulses, each with its own user-definable on and off times. We specify these parameters using something called a pulse train data file. Let's take a look at how these files are created and edited. There are two ways of creating a pulse train settings file, using edit pulse train data in the pulse generator menu, or importing a text or CSV file. For our first example, let's use Edit Pulse Train Data to create a pulse train directly on the SMA. Using Pulse Train Data, we can select a Pulse Train Data file, create a new file, or edit an existing file. Clicking on Edit Pulse Train Data brings up the data editor. For each row, we have an on time, off time, and repeat count. We build a simple pulse train by entering or editing these lines. Let's build a simple train by starting with a pulse of 3 milliseconds, followed by a delay of 1 millisecond. We then have a 1 millisecond pulse with a 1 millisecond delay, followed by a 3 millisecond pulse with a 5 millisecond delay. The last entry is a 3 millisecond pulse with a 1 millisecond delay, repeated three times. And as before, we can use the pulse graph to visually inspect our pulse train. Alternatively, we can create our pulse train using a text or CSV file and then import the file. The imported file needs to have the same three columns as before, pulse width, pulse interval, and pulse count. On both versions of the SMA100B, there are three BNC connectors related to pulse modulation, pulse sync, pulse video, and pulse external. Pulse sync generates a trigger signal at the beginning of each single pulse or pulse pair. Pulse Video outputs the internal pulse generator signal. Pulse External has two purposes. It can take the input of an external pulse modulator or receive an external trigger slash gate signal. Pulse External is probably the most important of these three connectors. Earlier, when talking about trigger mode, we mentioned that there are three types of external triggers for sending pulses. These external triggers are received by the SMA100B via the Pulse External connector. If we need to change the electrical properties of the input connector, such as the threshold voltage, 
This can be done via the Pulse External Trigger menu. Let's look at how these external triggers work. In external single mode, each received trigger causes a single pulse to be sent. In external triggered mode, pulses are sent continuously after a single trigger signal is received. And in external gated mode, pulses are sent as long as the external gate signal is present. Now that we've discussed external triggers, let's discuss pulse video. When pulse output state is enabled, the pulse video connector outputs the internal pulse generator signal. In other words, a replica of the pulsed RF signal. If we connect the pulse video connector to an oscilloscope and generate a pulse train, we can clearly see the same signal as shown on the pulse graph. We can also change the pulse output polarity from normal to inverse so that the output at the pulse video connector has reverse polarity. That is, video voltage is high when RF is low. Remember that what appears at the pulse video connector is essentially a copy of what's being generated by the SMA's RF output. So let's summarize what we've covered. First, the SMA100B can generate unmodulated pulses using either its internal pulse generator or external trigger signals. The internal pulse generator can produce pulses as single pulses, double pulses or pulse pairs, and pulse trains, which are sequences of pulses having independent on-off times. Triggering controls whether pulses are transmitted once, continuously, or for a defined period of time, and triggering can also be either internal or external. Lastly, remember that the SMA100B is an analog signal generator, which generates unmodulated pulses only. For more complex scenarios or modulated pulses, a vector signal generator would be required. This concludes our presentation, Configuring Pulse Modulation on the SMA100B. If you'd like to learn more about pulse signals, other modulation types, or signal generators, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.